In this demonstration, we'll show you how to connect Oracle Autonomous Database with Azure Web Apps. We'll take an ASP.NET Core application, use Oracle Data Provider for .NET, also known as ODP.NET, then deploy that to Azure and see how it can connect to Oracle Autonomous Database. It's fairly easy to do. There is some configuration involved, and we'll walk you through how to do that. Here we are in Visual Studio. We see that we have an autonomous database, ATP21C here, that's in my Oracle database cloud. And then we also have an account called admin account. So we'll be using this admin account to connect to this autonomous database. So we will first create a new project. We're gonna start from scratch and show you how from the very beginning, you can create a simple app, how to do this so that you can do this yourself as well. So we'll make it an ASP.NET Core empty application. Well, it's to make it as simple as possible, really. And we'll take the default names, that's fine. Um, we will keep it as the current latest target framework, which is .NET 5 now, but of course you can use .NET Core 3.1 or in the future .NET 6, this all should work. And to keep it simple, we uh, won't use HTTPS. So we'll create that. It will create kind of a stub application for me. Let's give ourselves a little more uh, space here so you'll see that some basic files have been created and one thing we'll definitely need is a data provider to be able to connect to the Oracle database and since this is a .NET app we'll be adding our ODP.NET Core driver so we'll right click on dependencies and choose manage NuGet packages uh, the NuGet gallery will open up we'll go to browse and we'll type in Oracle and the data provider we want is the ODP.NET Core driver you can see it here. It's Oracle Managed Data Access Core, and that one uh, works specifically with .NET Core and .NET 5. So we'll install that. We'll just use the latest stable version. It'll ask us if we want to install the prerequisites. We're okay with that. Whether we want to accept the license, we're okay with that. So now we're back to the application. Let's just verify that the dependency that we just installed really got installed, and it did. So that's good. And then we'll go to uh, startup.cs. That's going to be the file that gets shown when you run the application. Instead of using the code here, I'm going to take some source code that you could get on GitHub. I'm going to copy that. And then we'll just paste over this existing application here. Really, there's not that much that is different. It just saves me a lot of typing. I'll walk through the changes that I've made. Uh, specifically, we've added this using statement to be able to add the ODP.NET Core driver uh, so that this app can use it. The namespace here, since this is a web application nine, we'll use that as well here so that it's part of the same project. And then the rest is very standard. And here's the meat of the major changes that we are starting to make. So this is just some demo code that we have for ODP.NET Core. We'll add the password here. We'll then provide the data source. And that just signifies the instance and then we're using the uh, low uh, net service name. And then we direct where to find the tnsnames.ora, the sqlnet.ora, and the wallet. That directory I will copy and paste. And the rest of it is just connecting to the autonomous database and retrieving some results. So here we have a connection object with the connection string we just formed. Uh, we provide a uh, create a command object. Then we open the connection. Uh, once we open it, we output to the screen that we've connected to the autonomous database. And then we perform a query here. Uh, we're connecting to the sales history customers table. And this sales history schema is available to any shared autonomous database user. For most developers, they should have access to this. Uh, so we're just gonna fetch the first 20 rows from there. And we're just gonna select the first name, last name, city, and credit limit of that. And then execute it, read the results to the screen. And so very simple, that's it. So why don't we uh, run this and see if it works. So you notice that I've configured it with a local drive for where to find the TNS names and SQLnet.ora. So right now I'm just testing it against locally against the autonomous database, just as an interim checkpoint to make sure that everything's working. So we can see we got connected and that names, 
cities and credit limits have been returned accurately. So it looks like we're good. Now let's go and deploy to Azure. A few things we need to do when deploying to Azure is one, we have to uh, change the location of where these uh, TNS names, uh, SQL net aura and wallet location is put on the file system there. So I'm going to put that as the new location. When it gets deployed to Azure, it'll be able to find those files in there when we deploy this project. So next, I actually have to put those files into a directory, the DB directory in this project so that it gets deployed there. We're going to right click on here. We're going to add a new folder. Of course, we'll call it DB, just like we named it there. And we're going to add to there existing items. And we're going to pick up the files that we need. Here we have the C wallet SSO, that's the wallet, the SQLnet.ora, and the TNS names in ORA. So we add those three files there. So we add that. And we can see it's been added there. OK, so now we are ready to deploy. So we right click on the web application and we hit publish. This now what I'll do is I'll create a new Azure web app instance and deploy all these files to there. We're publishing to Azure, we hit next. And you can choose Windows or Linux. It's, it's up to you, both work because it's .NET Core. We'll just choose the default windows here. And then you can choose your resource group if you want. Since uh, we're starting from scratch, I don't have one pre-created, so we'll just create one real quickly. So it'll give it a default name for the app, and then we, a, a resource group if you have one, and then a hosting plan. So in the hosting plan, one thing I do want to make you aware is that you should choose a basic level or higher. You won't be able to use free or shared, not with autonomous database, because we are using a file system wallet here. So we'll choose the basic one. We say OK. And then we go hit Create. Deployed. So let's see. We see Publish. Everything looks OK. So we're say we finish. And then we should be able to formally publish here in a web deploy. Here we go. So we hit Publish up here. And we should see all the files be added up except for those credential files, which we'll do separately. You can see that ODP.net got deployed, but we don't see our credential files as expected. So we're going to explicitly deploy those here just because it's much faster if I just do that rather than making changes to my C -sharp project file. So we see that it's been deployed and it's succeeded. So let's go to our Azure portal. So here I'm in Azure portal. I can see that the web application just got created. So we will now go there to, to do a little more configuration before we actually try it out. We go to the settings configuration section, and we have to enable the load user profile. And this will allow the file system to be used in order to get the credentials so that the web app can authenticate to the Oracle database. OK, so to do that, we are going to add a new application setting, website load user profile. And to enable that, you set that to one. And we say, OK. So now that we see it here, <clears throat> website load user profile, we hit save. And that'll allow us to use it. It'll just bounce the web server so that it, it can be enabled. You have to give it a few seconds because it's still actually coming up. Even though it says it's ready, it's not quite ready yet. But we'll go to overview. And then we'll hit browse. And there it is. We're connected to the Oracle Autonomous Database. And the first 20 results have returned. As you see, it's pretty easy to get started doing a multi-cloud deployment with Oracle Autonomous Database and Azure.